I don't personally like to put my audio into the PowerPoint deck because what I'm going to actually end up doing is exporting this as a video and pulling it into an actual video editor. I use Camtasia. You can use whatever you want, but if you think about it, trying to get an audio file to play correctly over a proper, no, you know, whatever number of slides and things like that is almost making PowerPoint do something that it's not very good at. Okay, one of the biggest tips on all of this stuff is that PowerPoint is great for animations. It's great for creating some slide content and doing some graphic stuff like that. It is not a video editor. It sucks at video editing. Oh. So if you're making videos, PowerPoint's a great tool. These templates are great starting points and things we can use to create videos. But I never necessarily try to do everything inside a PowerPoint. And that includes using these audio files. Okay. Now, that again is just my personal preference. So I typically will go ahead and preview. Okay, that's not too bad. And I just kind of look for stuff that I kind of like in most cases. Now this one, for example, I love that. But here's a problem that you're going to see with these templates. In fact, I'll kick this into slideshow mode. So here it comes. It builds this awesome desk thing. I love that. Peter, and then it goes away. Right? So the biggest issue in really trying to dial these in has to do with some of the timing stuff. So let's open up the animation pane here for a second. And I'll just click on this top part here. And I don't know, it looks like it starts here. Trans 3. So if I play from there, see, this stuff right here it comes in automatically. And the biggest problem with these templates is they try to do all the timing automatically in these videos. And, and that's just really kind of a big issue. If you struggle with this stuff, if you, if you just wanted the, the desktop to stay longer, Modifying that is just kind of a nightmare. So if I drop down the properties here, you'll notice that this animation, which begins all of this transition stuff, starts after previous. In other words, as soon as this last text box comes in that says Peter is a product creator, it automatically jumps to this and begins it. Okay, so what I like to do in most cases like that is I want to control that action. And I will usually put that to start on click. And sometimes all of these other transitions and stuff will shift with it. But let me go into slideshow mode now, and especially if I'm adding narration. So now I'm recording. Are you sitting at your desk and are you busy? Well, Peter is a product creator and he can help you. Okay? Then I click and the transition happens. Right? So that's uh, just one of the things. Uh, let me find a different example. So here, I know these are exit animations because they're orange. And let's see what that does. In fact, I'm just going to delete this on top stuff here for a second. So let's watch that animation. Sander comes in and then she flies out. Well, what you're going to find is that she's going to fly out automatically. Okay, so if I change this to start on click so that when I want it to happen, oh, there's Sandra. Sandra, Sandra, go away now, Sandra. To try to, um, manually put in all this timing and stuff, that's where a lot of people are really going to struggle. So for the most part, I take that complexity out of the mix. You see, because even if I wanted to, let's undo that for a second. 
Uh, maybe there's a better example. I don't know. Let's preview this one. Okay, at least that one doesn't go away. What happens here? So we got all kinds of stuff happening, and then it goes away. <laughs> it, it really makes it tough. Even if I wanted to, I, I don't necessarily know what this delay should be, or how long that animation should last. It depends, <laughs> right? Depends on what, what the message is. And to try to dial all this stuff in manually is really just kind of a, ah, uh, it's a pain. That's why I never do it. Well, let me just back that up. I don't just try to do the timings here and then export this as a video, right? Export video. That's the way all the tutorials tell you how to do this. Here's how I use this. I will set all my stuff to on click and things like that where it makes sense. You know, I don't mind that this very beginning builds itself. That's awesome. I don't want to muck with that. But I do want to have it stop there. Okay, so let's do that. Start on click. Okay. Let's take a look and transition. Right. That's what I want to have happen. So the way I create my videos is I record them. Go into slideshow and record the slideshow. What that's going to do is PowerPoint is going to let me click through the slides and I can narrate if I want. That's method number one in the ultimate PowerPoint recording method is to just click through and record my narration. It's going to bake it right into the slides. And then I can export as video. Okay? But if, if things just happen automatically, then that's just not going to be <laughs> feasible. Or I'm going to have to try to tweak that timing and rush my voice or something. Ah, it's just too complicated. <laughs> Just take some of this timing animation out of there and record your silly slideshow, right? So that's kind of my basic take on what a lot of the issues that people have. Trying to time it in PowerPoint with these animation timings and stuff, it's just seriously way too much work and uh, exercise and frustration. PowerPoint has this neat little thing built right in that lets you record. So record. <laughs> so that's my, my basic rant on that. All right.